I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about volume by cylindrical shells. In problem number 27, we'd like to use the shell method to find the volume of a right circular cone of radius 3 and height 8. Okay, so we want to find the volume of a cone. We have formulas in geometry to do such things and we can certainly use those formulas from geometry to check our work at the end if we want to. But let's see how we would set this up using a shell method. So first of all I know I want a cone of radius 3 and height h. So I have to think for a second what kind of a shape do I need to set up here so that when I revolve it around one of the axes I actually get a cone. So this is the way I'm going to do it. This is not the only way. Uh, there are many ways to set this problem up. I'm just using one of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay what if we went out here and uh, let's say I went out here eight units. I went uh, out 8 and up 3 and then I look at this triangle okay so that there's a right triangle uh, its height is 8 its uh, base is 3 and what I'll do is I'll revolve that guy around the x-axis when I revolve that thing around the x-axis you see what I get I get a nice cone and the height of that cone is 8 and the radius of that cone is 3. So I get a cone of height 8 and radius 3 which is exactly what I want. So if I spin this thing around the x-axis I get the cone I'm looking for and I want to use the shell method to get the job done wise with the integration. So what I want to do is I want to say okay I want shells and the way that I'm going to get shells is cutting horizontal strips and spinning them around the x-axis and you can see a typical shell right here. Okay I'll say that that's at a point x. So using the shell method, I want volume is equal to, okay, what are we integrating to and from? So that's asking the question, when I make these vertical, I'm sorry, these horizontal slices, do I want to, uh, where do I start cutting, where do I stop cutting? And I start cutting this thing at y equals zero. I stop cutting this thing at y equals 3. By the way, the chops that I'm making would cut up the y-axis, not the x-axis. And since I'm cutting up the y-axis, I know that I need all the stuff inside the integral to involve y, including the limits of integration. They should be y values. So I start at y equals 0 and I stop chopping when I get to y equals 3. So I'm integrating from 0 to 3 and then what goes inside is 2 pi r for, why did I write x right here? I'm sorry, I should have written a y right here. This is a typical y value, not a typical x value. So um, what do we got here? Uh, for this typical y value, how far is it to the center? Well, it's y. So that is the radius is y. And then we need the height of that typical cylinder, which is the top function minus the bottom function. The top function in this case is x equals 8, so 8. And the bottom function is this line. Well, what is this line? Using uh, slope intercept form. The intercept is zero, so it's just y equals the slope times x. What's the slope? Well, the rise is three, the run is eight, so it's three eighths x. But we don't want three eighths x in there, we want y's in there. So let's solve for x here, and we get that x is equal to eight thirds y, and that's exactly what we want 
8 thirds y dy. Okay, so notice everything here involves y. We're integrating from a y value to a y value, and everything inside involves y because we're chopping up y. All right, so let's integrate this thing. I can pull out the 2 pi, and I get the integral from 0 to 3 of, I multiply through by this y, and I get 8y minus 8 thirds y squared dy. I can now take an antiderivative, and I get 2 pi times antiderivative of 8y is 4y squared, antiderivative of 8 thirds y squared with a negative in front is negative 8 ninths y cubed evaluated from 0 to 3. <coughs> okay, uh, let's plug things in here. If I do, I get 2 pi times, plug in a 3, 3 squared is 9, times 4 is 36. Plug in a 3, 3 cubed is 27, 27 divided by 9 is 3, so I just get minus 8 times 3, which is minus 24. And then if I plug in zeros, I just get zeros, so that's it. <clears throat> so we get 2 pi times 36 minus 24. 36 minus 24 is 12. And so my answer is 24 pi. And that is the volume of a cone with height 8 and radius 3. If you want to check it against your nice volume of a cone formula from geometry, I think you'll find that it comes out to the same thing.